Hello and welcome to the first episode <laughs> of Terrain Lab. I'm here with Dan, my name's Peter, uh, we're <laughs> from the Warhammer Gaming Guild of London and Dan has made many many lovely pieces of terrain for us over the years um, and today we're going to show you one little piece of terrain you can get done in how long? Oh, it only take you know a good part of an afternoon if you take drying time into account. And the great thing about this is that you can pretty much mass produce uh, these little desert huts. So here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> blue Peter style. Yes, very Blue Peter style. Yeah. Oh, look at that! Is that amazing? And I do have our where did he go? Our little assistant Sheriff Woody uh, to show you a bit of a, a scale comparison. <laughs> so cool. There we are. So we're going to be making uh, one of these today. Um, but uh, as I said, you could you could sort of mass produce these, you know, just do it step by step and and start building yeah. if you want to make a little little town. But no, we'll be doing a series of these videos uh, documenting quick and effective pieces of terrain that you can build simply and cheaply in your own home uh, within two, you know two or three hours. And before long, you're going to have a wonderful gaming table full of lots of interesting line of sight blocking terrain and techniques. We'll also be featuring a new beer on each show, so uh, you know, no good hobby days for Phil, especially a sunny day like this with yep. our beer. Yes. Uh, today we're featuring Q Brewery, which is a, a small sort of one man setup as far as I know. I got this from a uh, market just down the road here, um, and this is called Sheep in Wolf's Clothing, which is good. I'm a Space Wolf player. I, I am too. Got a few yes. space wolves, so I'm we're going to give, uh, give this go. So uh, it's a farmhouse IPA, it's fermenting using saison and US yeasts. Wow. This big farmhouse IPA is powered by the punchiest New English hops. Excellent. And it's 6.8%. So <laughs> if you want to know what the, it even tells you what the hops are. So for those interested, yeah. Archer, UK Bullion, UK Chinook, okay. Fusion. Yes. And I can't say that. Uh, uh, Olicana, I think it is. Olicana. Olicana. Sounds cool if you're Australian. Dan's Australian, if you don't get by now, yeah. Good eye. Alright, so yeah, let's open this up and you can right. have the honorary taste. So. Excellent. And then we can crack on with uh, with our uh, project. Oh, thank yeah. you very much. Oh. Even got it down to the, the 45 degree angle. I'm doing my like best a pro. Here. Don't spill it now. Oh. <laughs> Don't spill it. There you go. <laughs> thank you. Got it in my. Excellent. It's, it's, got, it's, got a, it's, it's got a Belgian head on it there. Belgian head. There you go. I'm going to try a little bit in this glass. Okay, excellent. I'm not sure if I'm going to like it as much as uh, you. Let's see. Brilliant. Oh, oh. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. Yeah. Oh, that's very nice. That is, that's quite nice. That's really well balanced, isn't it? Mm, it is. Very good. I like that. I thought it's going to be massively punchy on the hops, but it's really balanced out with it the is. Leathers, so. That's quite nice. There we go. Right. Anyway, let's uh, let's get on with the uh, terrain. Right, so. That's All what right. everybody's tuned in for. So we're going to have uh, we're going to have a few different steps. We're going to go through. Uh, we'll talk us through. We've got, we've got the, we're going to show you what we've got in yep. terms of materials. Yep. Talk you through the plan stage and yep. then actually how to do it. All so. right. Well, I'm going to hand you the plans. Good. Famous last words of everybody in uh, <laughs> the world. Rogue One. Don't give me the plan. <laughs> Darth Vader will be along in a minute. Uh, Slice some food things. Maybe he might. <laughs> so let's first of all start by talking about the materials that so we're going to use so in today's up. build. Um, we'll get to that in just okay. a minute. Cool. So first of all, let's work from the base up. So the base we're going to use is a piece of three mil MDF. Um, now the reason I've gone with three mil MDF is because uh, it it's a good solid base to work from but um, because we're going to be taking up most of the space uh, this is roughly a 12 centimeter by 12 centimeter piece of wood uh, it's not going to warp so much so rule of thumb is that the bigger your terrain piece is the thicker you want to go with your MDF to, to cause less warping uh, ideally if you can get your hands on some materials like um, masonite another good one uh, that doesn't warp as much, uh, but again, as I said, because we're utilizing pretty much the entire space uh, for the base of our, our little desert hut, uh, 3mm MDF is going to be fine for us today. So let's pop that. And where would on. you get that from? Um, you can pick that up from most hardware stores or hobby shops. Uh, it's usually quite cheap, so you can get big sheets of it if you if you want. Uh, save yourself a bit of money. Uh, now, the key material we're going to be using in today's build, I'm just going to move all of these bits and pieces, I should have organised this before we started filming, <laughs> is, uh, the M is, is, not the MJ, is foam core. Uh, now this particular piece of foam core, 
hopefully it's not causing too much glare on our cameras here today. Oh, here we go. A cloud's just fortuitously coming. Yeah. So thanks, God. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the Emperor protects. Yes, the Emperor shades. <laughs> um, so, so this is the name of SPF. Um, 50 mil uh, foam core. Uh, the reason I go with 50 mil is just because it's a really uh, solid uh, thickness to work with, particularly when you're building structures like our desert huts. Um, but also for measurements as well, uh, because we're going to have walls intersecting on this, it's easy to just quickly do the math knowing that this is half uh, a centimetre thick, so that we can work that into our calculations when uh, forming those corners and junctions. Um, now you'll notice with this particular uh, foam core, normally when you buy foam core, it's sandwiched between two thin slices of card. Now I've purchased this one without the card. Um, you can work with the card, it, it, it's not a problem, but I often find when you buy the foam core with the card, uh, the card can warp a little bit or it can start to peel off the, um, the foam core because it reacts to different things like glues or paints, uh, particularly if you're using spray primers as well. Um, now one thing I know people watching this are going to say is, well Dan, if you use a spray primer, that's going to eat into the uh, foam core because it is made of, of styrene. So uh, you are right, but there are ways to get around that. So uh, I'm going to work with this today, but it's, it's really up to you as to whether or not you want to work with the, the foam core that is sandwiched between the card or just the foam core on its own. And again, you can pick that up from, from most craft and hobby shops, relatively cheap. Uh, the next material we're going to use, I'll just move the, uh, the foam core aside for now, uh, is some card. Uh, we'll be using that mainly for just some framing on our uh, a little hut. Uh, also for some light structural work too. Uh, this is just some thin card from a, uh, a cereal box. So obviously once you've uh, had your, your breakfast or poured it into like a Tupperware container, uh, you can just hang on to the, the nice big flat bits of, of card. Yeah. Um, Eat your way to gaming terrain. Good. Yeah. Very good. Breakfast of champions means you've got, you know, amazing terrain, later terrain later. materials. Yeah. Uh, and the final material we're going to be using in our build uh, are coffee stirrers, which you can pick up from any uh, cafe. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, just tell the, the barista you need six of them to stir your coffee so that it blends perfectly. Yeah. And then go in a <laughs> hundred more times. And, yeah. Just take them. Um, <laughs> we'll just get your friends whenever they're grabbing yeah. a coffee to grab a couple of extra stirrers. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, now, tools wise, uh, pretty sort of standard hobby tools we're going to be using for the build. Um, so first of all we've got our scalpel. Uh, the thing you've got to bear in mind with scalpels, particularly when using them with your phone core, is you want a sharp blade. Uh, if you're not using a, a sharp blade, it's going to start to burr the material, uh, start to cause it to sort of pill. Uh, and because we're doing uh, a hut where there's intersections and corners, we want those edges to be nice and flush so that they mm. join up perfectly. So again, just make sure that you're using sharp blades. I guess I guess if you're starting to have to apply a lot more pressure than normal, you know that your blade is getting dull, right? Y yes, that is a, a telltale sign of just having a look at it and you'll notice that the, the, the edge of the blade's not very keen, particularly on a, on a scalpel where it's got that little sort of lipped edge. Yeah, yeah. So you'll notice that pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to use some cutters, some clippers. Uh, again, these are um, uh, these ones have been through the wars, uh, <laughs> so you might want to get yourself a separate pair to the ones you normally use when building your models. Uh, these ones have got all sorts of nicks and, and cuts along the uh, the blade edges of the, the clipper, um, and you know when you cut materials like your um, your coffee stirrers. Uh, it is going to take its toll on the clippers. So just an old pair or pick up a cheap pair from a hardware shop or a hobby shop and uh, you should be right to go with those. Now some people might think, oh I've got some scissors here, can I use these? You can use some scissors but I find that when you go to cut with, with scissors because the blades are so long of scissors it can cause the cut to be a little bit off from what you want to do so you lose that precision. Okay. So I wouldn't recommend using scissors for this. Okay. Um, I'm also going to be using a metal ruler. Um, obviously there's other materials that rulers are made of, like plastic and wood. Mm. Uh, please don't use those, particularly when you're cutting with a, a scalpel, uh, because obviously the scalpel will cut into the plastic or uh, wood rulers, so then you're not getting a, a perfectly straight edge. 
you're going to be getting a um, yeah wonky edge. a wonky edge. Nobody wants a wonky edge. Wonky edge, and the blade will dull as it cuts into yeah. the, the wood or plastic. So don't do that. And then just a pen for when we're marking out uh, our cuts. Uh, and that's really, apart from some uh, some some PVA wood glue, uh, that's all we really need. Great stuff. Yeah. How much uh, uh, for all the materials uh, for this project? Um, I mean. It really all depends on, on where you want to go to get it. Uh, obviously, shop around. You'll find that the tools will vary in price depending on where you go, uh, but it shouldn't be too too big of a budget. I think, all in all, for this terrain project, um, to produce uh, not just one, but you know multiple uh, desert huts is going to be less than 20 pounds. Wow. So it's, it's not an expensive... That's including the tools. Um, Maybe a little bit more, including the tools. But, <laughs> but the tools you should be sort of budgeting for separately because you're going to be using okay. them on multiple projects. So, so. For, for 20 pounds, how many huts do you think? I reckon I could probably churn out maybe you know, half a dozen or so. Okay, that's really good. Because so, I only consider how much, you know, a single piece of terrain might yeah. cost if you buy it. Well, it, it really all depends on the size. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to show you how to make a basic one, but you can play around with the sizes uh, and the, uh, so, I guess, the design that you want to use. So, speaking of design, we're going to have a look at the plans now and see what uh, we're going to be building today. So as you can see, uh, it always helps to go through and just uh, do like a rough sketch of what you want to create, particularly if it's the first time that you're, uh, you're making a terrain project uh, like this. And then, um, particularly with structures, you can go through and do the different facings, different facades on the, uh, the building which gives you a bit more of an idea of what it's, I guess, the breakdown of what it's gonna look like. Um, and as you can see, I've also put in measurements uh, so that I know if I'm making these en masse, how, I guess, big uh, I need to make my cuts for each side. Probably help for consistency as well. It does help for consistency, yeah. Uh, and because we're working with such a, a small scale, uh, you can actually do it at one to one ratio on a piece of paper. So hmm. even if you wanted to do it as a kind of like a template and then uh, you could just go through and uh, use that as a stencil almost for your cutting. Right. But uh, without uh, you know, further prefabric... Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> the beautiful drawing as well now. So if, if, if my plan looks as good as that, I'd probably frame it to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to say, without... Uh, wasting further time let's uh, let's get stuck into it so let's start with our sheet of foam core so the first thing we're going to do is just measure out the uh, the sides and uh, I'm going to use my metal ruler and, and my pen just a, a biro pen to mark those out so I'll do it I guess facing me and then I'll flip it around just to, to show you what we're doing. And I'll just do one side first, cool. uh, just to show you how it all works. So, going off my plans, the uh, length of the facade of the front side of the building is going to be 10 centimeters. So, uh, I apologize for those of you who normally work with uh, the Imperial system, but today we're working metric because that's the <laughs> way I was raised. <laughs> so, I mark out 10 centimeters, and then there's the old adage, old adage of measure one, uh, measure twice, cut once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the beer's already getting to me. Uh, so I've marked out my, my 10 centimeters there. Uh, I'm gonna go and mark out the height of the wall, which according to my plans is eight centimeters tall. So I'm just gonna get that nice and... Change my... Oh, thank you, so the beer doesn't get <laughs> too, warm. too warm on this. Lovely day. Lovely, unseasonably warm. Mm. London day. Uh, so as you can see I've just marked out the length of the wall and the height of the wall. Now this is where having something like a cutting mat like this comes in handy or if you've got a roller ruler that's even handier because it'll keep the um, the proper dimensions when you go to uh, I guess rule your lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to get it nice and centered on the board. I may have to just kind of stand up a little bit to make sure that I'm measuring this correctly. So I can line it up with uh, with the rules on my cutting mat to make sure that I'm getting a straight line. 
and I'm actually just going to go all the way up um, the entire length of the foam core board. And then I'll do the same for the uh, other edge. Another thing you can do is just measure eight centimeters along this line. Mark that off as well. So the glare on this is <laughs> intense. intense. Ah, it's like staring into the sun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I know that that's eight centimeters. Um, and then I can get it again. So if I line it up just nicely, that line. I know I'm going to get a straight edge. Perfect. So that is the front side of our building. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in... So this is the side on the front or is this the front? No, this is the front here. Okay. We're going to go and, and measure and cut the other sides, but because they're just blank walls, mm. um, I, I think that's going to be very unentertaining YouTubing. So we'll, <laughs> we won't worry about that for now. We'll, cool. we'll, we'll do that in our own time. Cool. Um, but I will get that front measured out because we've got a door and a window on there. So again, having the plans on standby is a really helpful thing because I can quickly reference uh, how, how, how wide uh, my door and my window are and what height they're going to be. So I know that the, the door, according to my plans, is going to be three centimeters uh, wide. So it's really just a case of um, working out First of all, what side I want the door on. Um, I'm going to put it on uh, my right hand side of the building, if um, I'm you know, going from my perspective. And I'm going to bring it roughly about, I'll go two centimeters in from uh, that edge. So I know it's 10 centimeters, so I'm going to mark out uh, eight. Yeah. And the door is three centimeters in width. Um, which is a nice kind of size. You can make the doors bigger if you want or a little bit smaller, it's up to you. Uh, but I found with um, the models that three centimeters was a, was a good width. So I'm gonna just mark that out here at the five centimeter mark, working on that 10 centimeter uh, edge. And again, to make sure I'm getting a straight line, I'm gonna go up to the, uh, the I guess the roof line, if you call it that, of the structure. And I'm just going to mark out a mark at eight and another mark at five. So then I should have a straight line for the sides of my door. And as you can see, I'm going to just do lines the entire length of the wall. Um, don't worry, when, when you eventually go through and built your structure and you've textured it, which we'll cover in another video, you won't see those lines. So don't freak out. Uh, the only way you'd see those lines is if you purposely pressed hard into the, uh, the foam core. Mm, good tip. So just light strokes with the pen. Okay, and then my door, the height, um, I'm guessing I didn't actually mark it out on my plans, oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> That's the, the linchpin that's gonna bring it all down. Um, you, got, you got the one you made I've earlier. I've got the one I made earlier. I'm pretty sure it's four centimeters uh, in height. I can even go through and measure. I'll, I'll measure on my pre-existing structure. Yeah. Uh, just quickly, oh, there's the front. Yeah, it's a four centimeter height. There you go. So I will work on that, but on your plans, mark out <laughs> all the different <laughs> measurements. So if I get my ruler, bring it a little bit further down the board so that people can sort of mm -hmm. get a bit of a better picture of what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I really hope this isn't creating too much glare. On should be fine. Should be fine. I know a lot of people out there when they work with foam core, they prefer to work with the black foam core, which you can get, um, because it's a bit more forgiving um, and a bit easier to see when you rule it with like a, a, a lead pencil uh, to get those lines. But them's the brakes. So, so rule that there, that line for the, I guess the lintel of my door. And there you have it. There's our door all marked out. Cool. Brilliant. So, as <laughs> a comparison. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the window on the front. Um, again, you can have um, the doors and windows set up at different points on the structure. Uh, but I thought just for simplicity's sake, we'll keep the door and the window 
on the one side of the structure on the front because uh, these desert dwellers aren't the most you know loaded of people <laughs> so the window going back off my schematics uh, it's roughly a, it's at that top line of the door I uh, now know is four centimeters in height so I'm guessing it's going to be two centimeters again I should have marked this out <laughs> it's two centimeters off the uh, off the, the, the ground line yeah so I'm just gonna go through on my board and mark out two centimeters on one side and two centimeters on the other so that I know I'm gonna get a straight line when I roll it. So there we go. So that's gonna be that baseline for um, my my window. Now I'm gonna position the window. I'll give a little bit of space between the window and the door. I'll go two centimeters away from the door and mark out uh, one side of the window. Now the window is two centimeters squared. So I just need to go to the four centimeter mark and make another mark there. Mm. Okay. I'm also gonna bring this, the line for the lintel of the door, the top of the door, uh, across the whole breadth of width, I should say, <laughs> of the wall. And then I'm gonna go through and, uh, and just mark those, uh, about two centimeters again do it my way so I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> so I think it's a one centimeter mark. Yeah, perfect. So the one and the three. So. Okay, I hope everybody's following at home. Apologize if this 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 process isn't the most thrilling part of the build. I think essentially what we're doing here is drawing this almost again, isn't it? On the... It is. On the, on the plans itself, so we know when to cut them. Yeah, as I said, you can, you can if you want, um, create that as a stencil, particularly if you're going to mass produce these little huts. Um, but uh, for the purposes of today's build, I'm just going to work off the plans, uh, not using them as a stencil, but more as a guide cool. for, for that. So what we'll do is I'll go through and I'll mark up the other, um, the other uh, facings of the wall. Uh, which again is just repetition of that first yeah. uh, markings that we made on this uh, piece of foam board. So uh, I won't bore you with that. We might just yeah, we'll fast forward, fast forward through that yeah, yeah. And, uh, and come back to when we're going to get a cut it. Okay, cool. Okay, so we've gone through and marked out uh, the cuts that we're going to make to our sheet of foam core. Um, now, another thing I, I think I should point out is that. In order for us to make a perfectly square, well, I say perfectly, but roughly square structure, um, we do need to take into account uh, the thickness of the material that we're using, just like I mentioned at the start of the video. So what you'll notice is that the front side and the rear side are going to be 10 centimeters, but the two uh, left and the right side of the building, they're going to be nine centimeters because we're working with 50 mil uh, foam core. So that's going to take mm. up a centimeter of, of space so just remember when you go to make measure out your uh, your wall sections if you're looking for perfectly square or close to it uh, you do need to take those uh, uh, calculations into account okay so the next thing we do is going to go through and cut this uh, so that's where we get our metal ruler and our scalpel which just hold like a regular pen uh, now the best way to, to do this is to make the biggest cuts first. So we line that up on our, our guide that we've drawn out. And when you go to cut, you want as much of the cutting surface of the blade to come into contact with uh, the material that you're cutting. So in this instance, we're gonna, we're gonna hold it as low of an angle as we, we can. So that as much of that blade is gonna contact with the material to get that nice flush cut and then the key with cutting is speed not pressure mm. so um, you don't have to press down that hard um, just try and get a nice fluid motion I guess that comes back to that sharpness yeah and as you'll see that is a nice flushly yeah, nice. cut edge yeah so having that uh, 
sharp blade and not too much pressure, but you know, as low an angle as you can of the cut is gonna help you with that. So I'm just gonna go through and, uh, and cut the rest of the sides of our building out using the, uh, the same method as we did before. Do you ever um, mark non, I mean, are, are these all cutting edges that we've marked off? Pretty much. Um, you can obviously mark out um, non-cutting edges if you want. Like uh, you know, a dash line or something? Or yeah, um, or, or if you're going to put, like we will a bit later on, uh, use that card for framing. If you want to mark that out on here, you, you're more than welcome to. Um, I'm actually going to do that in just a minute um, for something as well. Um, it might be worth your while, particularly if you're mass producing these, to maybe use a different coloured pen so that you know that's a cut line, that's a fold line, or that's a, a marker for a contact point, whatever it's going to be. Um, so I'll just put our cuttings to one side and then go through and cut the rest of our structure out as another plane flies over. <laughs> I'm guessing that's on its way to Heathrow. It is, yeah. yeah. It is, yeah. I, can't, I can't see the tail fin. I can't even see the plane. I don't know where it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> that way. <laughs> so the flight coming in from Qatar. I don't know. I'd say you get used to it. And you, you do. do. It, it, kind of, it kind of fades into the background. It does. After a while. That's true. Oh. And I'm just going to cut out our final side so we've got all of them together. Very nice. Nice and easy. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, so but you can all, already feel they've got a, a bit of a kind of a rigidity to them. Yeah. They've got a bit of a bit of gusto to them, a bit of a bit of uh, solidity, I don't know. Solidity, yeah. <laughs> Denseness. Very good. I oh, don't know, I left my thesaurus at home today. <laughs> Should have brought it with me. But we'll add it in. We'll add it in. We'll, we'll add it in. That's the beauty of editing. <laughs> okay, so as I said, I'm going to mark out uh, another um, thing on my sides before I go and put them together. Uh, and if we get our completed structure, what I'm going to mark out is where the uh, roof is going to go, or this kind of pseudo balcony on top of our structure. Uh -huh. Uh, just so then that way when we go to build the structure, we can make sure that that uh, surface is level. Got it. So um, the measurement for that, I believe it's two centimeters down. Just quickly cross-reference my pre-built one. Or if we check the plans, there's nothing really on the plans. It is two centimeters down on the pre-built one, so I'll, I'll go with that. So all I need to do is just on every facing, uh, go find two centimeters from the edge. So I like using the corners so I know that I'm, I'm getting a nice straight angle. I know it's not the best for for camera work but uh, it's good. It's okay. Two centimeters. And I just rule that line. That does look a little bit wonky. I'm gonna go back and just double check that I've made that at the correct point. It is a little bit lower. It's okay. Again, measure twice, cut once. So there you have it. I've got a two centimeter line as a guide for when I go to fit the, the flooring in for the for, for the roof. <laughs> Floor and roof are one in the same. Let's double check. Yeah, that's two centimeters cool. along that line. So I just need to go and mark that out for all of them because if you don't as I said you, you get slanty floors and you'll you only notice that after you've built the structure and you start putting models on it and they start to yeah, slide, slide a little bit yeah. which can really throw you during the I'm guessing the shooting phases of a lot of games uh, like I can see that I can see my target uh, no I can't it's very old you know every old building has a little bit of you know <laughs> subsidence bit of, bit of lean to yeah so you know you can just make it part of the structure the character of the building if you really want to yeah yeah this town was built upon a swamp. That's, that's true. Oh, let's go through it quickly. Got a little bit of 
rotating now. That was just rolled in. Just rolled in. We're getting cooked in this corner, I think. It's nicely sauteed. <laughs> So that'll mark out where uh, that's our, the inside, isn't the it? Inside. The inside. So that'll yeah. be the inside of the building. Yeah. Uh, but you'll use that as a guide. As I said, if it's, if you're producing these on mass, or if you've got like a bit of a team of people together, uh, might be worth doing them in a, a different color so that everybody knows. Well, that's a cut mark, and that's a fold mark, or that's a connection mark. Yeah. Or if um, you don't have a handy four color pen, you could use different like dashes. Maybe yeah, you could like different marks, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to put these to the side next to you there, Pete. Sure. And I'm going to go and just cut the um, the door and the window out on the front facing of the building. So again, just like we did before, try and get that blade at as low an angle as possible. Nice, smooth, fluid motions with our cutting so that we get a nice flush edge. Even though these aren't really going to contact with... Um, other parts of the structure, uh, we still want to get those nice smooth flush cuts so that it all looks nice and schmick. Now at this juncture of the tutorial I just want to say what you want to do is hang on to these cutouts mm -hmm. of your uh, building for the door and the windows because later on when we go to texture the building we're actually going to use these to cover those openings so that the texture doesn't get into parts we don't want it to. So um, just hang on to these. Keep your bits. Uh, keep your bits, put them to one side, uh, and don't lose them. I've so. got a question for you, Dan. Yes. Maybe when we get to this point. That's but okay. when you're putting the walls together, yeah. uh, is there any preference as to whether you join things like that or like that? Um, we will be covering that. Um, it all comes down to your measurements. Like, as I said, we're, we're aiming for a 10 centimeter square structure with this build. So uh, because the sides have been cut for nine, yeah. they're, they're gonna just meet as flush See. joints. There's no trick joints or anything. It's just, got it. Uh, yeah, meeting direct. I don't know what the actual, carpentry term for that is. <laughs> Somebody will probably fill us in the comments. Later. That's alright, it's fine. Correct us. By all means. Um, now when you go to cut the window, you may notice that I'm overcutting it a little bit. And that's fine. Uh, again, when you've gone to texture it up, that'll cover up those ex the, the additional cut. I'm not cutting too deep at that point. Um, but when you're cutting uh, out a, a part of uh, your material where it's uh, in the middle of it you don't have an edge to work off uh, unfortunately you're going to have those uh, overcuts so um, don't be too worried about that um, and just try and gently push it out don't go too it might with it. breaking a bit of it I guess yeah because uh, yeah it'll start to break off a little bit which we're not building a ruin for this one <laughs> so all you need to do is just with your knife go back and uh, just run it along those cuts again where you're feeling that contact and just try it again there we go perfect and there you have it we've got our front uh, uh, facade of the building ready to roll cool and Pete's put the cutoffs in the beer glass beer glass that's thank exactly you exactly where they need to be that's exactly it some blame away so, all right so really what have we got here we got the front bit right so we've got the front bit. bit yeah there we go uh if we can maybe bring it a little bit yeah up to camera there we go Ta -da. Ta -da. so it matches it's good to go um now before we press on any further we're actually going to go through and do the uh door and window shutter for our structure um because when you put it all together it, it gets a bit harder to get in at those points to put in uh, the little trap door at the top and the door and the window shut up on the front so we'll, we'll tackle that bit now right okay so when uh, covering uh, a gap like the window here 
what you want to do is with the material that you're going to cover it with you need to over measure it so we know that this window gap is two centimeters by two centimeters so I'm going to measure uh, the cuts on my coffee stirrer at three centimeters that way I've got 50 mil on either side as contact points to put the glue on and uh, to hold it in place and give it a bit more support so I'll just put that to one side and then with my coffee stirrer you'll notice I've marked off the uh, the bend the little curvy bit on the coffee stirrer because we're not going to need it and then I'll just go through and mark out uh, some three centimeter cuts so three centimeters roughly three centimeters six is where your three times tables comes in handy mm -hmm. finally something from primary school help. yeah if, if if you don't know them just grab a primary <laughs> school age <laughs> child to <laughs> yeah. rope them into helping you always help and uh, one that you know not yeah. just random go around, around grabbing random children don't don't, don't do that don't do that no no, no. Bad. And then with uh, the clippers, just getting the uh, the flat edge of our clippers as the cutting point, uh, going through and just clipping off those uh, points. So there's a little bit of an act there. You got like a twisty, yeah, with, and with, twist. with wood because it's got a grain to it. Yeah, uh, it's not as easy just to go through and, and cut it. And I'll just make that a little bit just to get there. Would you recommend sandpaper? You can if you want. I mean, if but you're not going to see it, are you? You're not going to see those yeah. edges, so there's no real point. But yeah. that's okay. So let's go through. So we're using three centimeters of wood to cover a two centimeter gap, like you said. That's yes, so we did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. So I'm just going to go through. So there's a twist and then back. So you squeeze, twist, and back. Yeah, roughly. And just. Uh, quite bad that one. <laughs> I'll just get the clippers and tidy that up a little bit. So we got four pieces here. And the last one, oh, I'll just cut this one for good measure. Nice. In case we need a spare. Look at that. Right. So that's gonna be our window shutter on our if I hold up there, so these just, these just go behind here. That's right, yes they're gonna do that. So I'll just grab our PVA so we can glue them in. And we know that this is the back. because That is the back, yes, because yeah, yeah. it's got that line for the, uh, for, the ceiling. For, for the ceiling. That's right. So I've got my, ooh, whoa. Oh, it's, it's, it's ready to go. It is. It's very keen. <laughs> That's right, I've, just got, I've got the magic touch. So just do a line at the bottom of the window and a line at the top. Very, gen very, very thin amount there. Yeah. Um, I find if you've got an overexcited uh, tube of PVA glue, uh, it's also helpful if you get a bit too much out, just get a, a little bit of tissue paper, or a, a tissue or some kitchen roll, mm. and just um, smother it a bit. Smother it a bit, uh, get the excess off, but that's okay. Um, and then all I need to do is just line those bits of coffee stirrer onto the uh, the window there. Easy peasy. Yeah, so that's just going in nicely. You can leave little gaps if you want. Uh, up to you if you want it nice and neat or a little bit rough. Um, go That's for it. Um, I've I've seen other people use other materials as well. Um, like if you get uh, like packing tissue paper, not like tissue tissue paper, and coat that in PVA, and you can kind of scrunch it up a bit. It, it makes for good like cloth, um, like faux cloth, like curtains. Like curtains, yeah. Mm. So if you are wanting, you know, like a, a, a rough curtain instead of shutters, you can do that. Uh, but we're going to use shutters. Uh, and as you can see, there's just a little bit of uh, excess, which I'm going to just get out of there with the... That'll go away anyway when you it, texture it. It right will. Now. It will dry, but we'll just... Get you guys to be clean. Yeah. So and that it doesn't... How long will that take to dry? On a day like today, it's not going to take very long. Because um, PVA being a liquid, obviously, is subject to evaporation. So we're going to... Just leave that in the corner there. Maybe if I flip it. You could flip it if you want. Um, it's going to dry either way. The next thing we're going to do is the door. Uh, now the door is a little bit more complex. Uh, we're going to need a bit of our uh, card to, to do the door. Right, so we're going to do the supports for the door. Uh, and we're going to use the, the card to make them because uh, Obviously it's our most abundant material, uh, most inexpensive material, and uh, it w it's also not going to be seen on the fronts 
of the terrain so we can just do it as roughly as we want um, and it, it should hold up so that'll be fine so what we're going to do is uh, I know that the door is three centimeters wide and again we're going to over measure so that we've got support on either side I'm going to use the little flappy bits on the side of the um, of the card because uh, they're not really going to be much else use elsewhere so so I marked out four centimeters there I'm just going to make it um, a centimetre uh, in width and I'm going to need two of them so I'll just measure two centimetres mark out uh, those measurements oh, the sun is glinting off this ruler something chronic <laughs> I'll work with it, it'll be fine okay so, it's going to get so hot you can brand people oh, I see, I see. with the metric measurements fry an egg off it Whoa. And I'll just quickly rule those across. They're not going to be amazingly straight, but I don't need them to be. It'll be okay. As I see them, I'm going to grab my scalpel and I'm just going to quickly cut them. And go from there. Whoa. Whoa, it's a bit hot. Oh, it's <laughs> really hot now, isn't it? Touching, <laughs> touching the metal bits. Un un uncharacteristically hot British weather. I was going to say. I feel like I'm home. It's, it's, it's very hot. <laughs> I was not expecting this. It's, it's okay. We, we, can we shouldn't complain. It. We can't complain. We cannot complain. So, well, there'll be a rebellion in the country if we complain about hot weather on a, on a, in London. Yes, that's true. What are we yeah. at today? For those interested, it is. Yeah. We're well, saying it's 20, 23 degrees, but I'm, okay. I'm sure in our little. Cause this is a sun trap. Yeah. We've got these white reflective walls, so I, I believe we're just sort of being. Irradiated with the sun at all angles right now. So, barbecued. All right, so I'll get rid of that card. I've got this card. I'm going to bring back our door where the windows have dried because it's so hot. <laughs> <laughs> and all I need to do. Normally, how, how, if you just had that in your house, you're doing it at night. How long would it take for that? Oh, uh, it really all depends. Um, it, it does respond to heat. Um, you know, so the hotter it is. The quicker that evaporation is going to take place and the glue will set. So as you can see I've just put a couple of little dabs on uh, our supports so that when they contact with the, the door I'm going to put one towards the bottom. Now you don't want to put it right at the bottom because then it'll start to just show through with your, your door slats. It's on the back of the, the, the building again right? The back of the wall. Uh, well, this is this is at the door, so the door's on the front of the building. No, but I mean, uh, we're sticking it onto the back. We are. We're sticking it onto the back side of this wall. Yeah. Um, so that that's going to be the f what people will see. This is what's happening behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. So that's. I'm just going to put that to one side for it to dry, and then um, it's going to dry whilst we do this next step. I've gone and pre-cut. The uh, uh, can I just in interrupt for a second? Yeah, sure. I'm, I'm noticing you've only got two pieces there. Is there a reason why there's gaps? Um, yeah, so these are just supports. Ah, because uh, the door. Oh, we're going to stick wooden bits on. Yeah, we're going to stick wooden bits right. on it. Okay, yeah, cool. Brilliant. So I've gone and pre-cut them. Nice. Uh, now the coffee stirrers are roughly uh, 50, uh, 50, 5 mil in thickness, um, but. Uh, there's always a little bit of variation, particularly if you're picking them up from different coffee shops, because obviously they're, uh. they're sourcing their coffee stirs. Do you stirs. have a preferred brand of coffee I, stir? I don't, then? I don't. I really don't. It's fine. Uh, I'm not going to endorse any particular cafes okay, in good. this video. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to glue these onto our little support struts that were made of card. So again, I'm just going to get our PVA glue and just do a little line or thereabouts on our um, supports and then just like we did with the um, the window but this time these these particular uh, bits of, of coffee stirrer are cut to fit in this cavity they're not <coughs> over measured like these ones because the supports are doing the work um, that the over measurement would on the other bits of, of wood if that makes sense yeah so and I've also cut them a little bit shy of four centimeters, which is the height of the door, because I do want there to be a little bit of a gap at the bottom, just so that the the stirrers.
don't cause uh, the bottom of our wall to uh, not sit properly on the base. So we just go through and lay them in like so. You can again, as I said, you can put in little bits of like little gaps. So when when, when you cut those, just make yep. sure that they are a little bit shorter. Than just a little bit. Like if you go maybe a mil shorter than what your um, what that cavity is mm. for the door. Oh. <laughs> Get them so they don't overlap. And this one's going to have a bit of a gap, I think. Oh, there we go. That's a massive gap. I'm actually thinking if whether or not I can fit that other half. <laughs> a try. I did have the other half on standby. Just That's like in case. Yeah, look oh, at that. perfect. Look at that. Yeah, that one's a little bit long for my liking. Can you cut it back afterwards? Um, I can. So it's not the end of the world. I'm okay. going to leave that strong. I'm just going to get one of our little offcuts, yeah. spare sticks, and just get rid of that PVA. Wonderful. Off there. So there you have it. Look, look at that. that. Whoa. Just like let's a bought one. Let's flip it. Oh, that's <laughs> the front. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And on the back, that's what it looks like. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. There it is. Easy. Cool. cool. So we're just going to set that aside to dry. Flip it doesn't really matter it's gonna dry anyway I'm gonna glue into the table okay so now we're gonna get stuck into actually piecing together um, the the walls before I do that I'm just gonna quickly measure out and cut the um, the ceiling the roof for our structure which is gonna be nine centimeters by nine centimeters because we're taking into account um, the extra um, five mil of thickness for the the walls of our hut so nine centimeters by nine centimeters. Just quickly do it right there. Ooh. Quickly do a nine there. You may, you may notice there's a bit of uh, humidity <laughs> forming forming on there, and that's yeah. it's so hot that the cameras are <laughs> overheating, <laughs> just and, and, we're, and we're having to to spray. My love, this is my terrace by the yes. way. I'm having to spray, spray it, it to uh. keep it to keep it cool. Uh. And it, I don't know if it's working, but <laughs> it's. Uh, I think it'll be fine. There. It's right. in principle, right? Evaporation causes cool. Oh, yeah, let's see. I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but anyway. I'm just gonna get that line. Looks like it's lined up. Yeah. Oops. Straight, and then we can go and measure nine centimeters along this line. Then I'm going to put my little trap door in as well. It looks like it's on a bit of an angle, that one. I'm just going to double check that. Oh, no, nine centimeters is uh, a little bit. Oh, no, no, that is nine. And that is nine as well. It just looks a little bit wonky, but I think that's just me. Um, and I'm going to put my trap door about a centimeter in from each edge now it's going to be the same dimensions as our window because obviously trap doors don't really need to be that big i'm just going to measure down here as well so that i can make sure that it all marries up we might fast forward this bit yeah i think so because it's just me doing some very rudimentary measurements So cut, uh, as you can see, it uh, was a little bit wonky with some of these lines, but we've got it all sorted. And uh, we've got the uh, slats glued in as well. So we can now start building our structure. So I'm going to put the roof to one side. I'm just going to concentrate on the rear of the structure and one of the sides of the structure. Um, now what I do, I do need the, the PVA glue for this oh, bit. Thanks, Pete. <laughs> That's all right. 
So all I'm going to do is just run a little bit of PVA down the side of our long edge because as we know it's 10 centimeters in width and this is 9 centimeters in width so we know that this is going to be uh, the side and this is going to be the rear and that they should meet up here in this corner so I'm just going to get them uh, relatively flush in the contact point let's move this uh, PVA over now I'm going to use a little bit of a helpful uh, tool to help me at this juncture in our tutorial and that's some sewing pins uh, you can pick these up from uh, arts and craft stores or some supermarkets even sell them as well um, they're not very expensive at all and we're just gonna get uh, the sewing pin and I'll show you what I'm doing but I'm basically putting it through on an angle uh, so that it brings the two corners of the structure together. I don't know if you can see that, but as the, the pin has just gone in on a 45, roughly 45 degree angle uh, to the wall, so it holds them in place. I'm going to put another one uh, at, the, uh, at the bottom, so that holds it in it as well. on an angle and that the sides of the wall are lush so we've got a nice corner and there we have it now it is going to be a, a little bit off because those pins are kind of forcing it in together but when we glue our roof in which we're going to do next that's going to um, get it to kind of at the uh, the right angle that we need for that corner so as you can see that line I marked out before with the um, for the, the roof that's uh, met at the right point so I can glue that in and use that as a guide for where I want my roof to go. I'm just going to pop some glue on that line sorry you can't really see this at home folks oh that got a bit a little bit conscientious there with the, the glue I'm just going to smear that out a bit and then I'm going to pop the roof in and I'm just matching it up with that, that line then I'll try and I'll try and do it facing the camera so that you can see at home but it's a little bit harder for me if I do that That should measure up with that line and I'm going to get some more of these sewing pins to hold it in place while it dries. So again just going in at that 45 degree angle. And there's no problem getting these out when the, the glue No, dries. no, they'll just slide out because um, uh, yeah the glue doesn't really hold them in place. Cool. Yeah. So, and even if you you just need to give it a little bit of welly it'll come out and it shouldn't it shouldn't tear or uh, upset the uh, the material that it's gluing in place I'm just putting another one in oh, oh that one didn't really <laughs> go that well let's try that again there you go perfect okay so as you can see but our structure is starting to form mm. so that's all uh, that's drying there so I'm just gonna pop that to one side and then I'm gonna grab my uh, other side piece of the structure and glue that in and on a nice sunny day it shouldn't take too long for this to, to, to dry just gonna pop a bit of glue so I've popped a bit of glue on that edge and then again just getting um, my side I'm going to put a little bit of glue along that line for the ceiling so it hold, helps to hold it in place just pop it in and as you'll see as you start to build the structure it'll start to lend a bit more support to itself so that each each time you bring a wall in to connect it's helping the structure maintain its shape which is what we want so I'm just gonna again put in a, a pin for the, the flooring 
It's also casting a very Batman-esque shadow. It is. Uh, we can't really see it from <laughs> that side, but there's a bit of a you know, two sort of like the bat ears. Yeah. For me on our side. <laughs> it's a sign, I think. I think the, the Batman will be proud. Batman will be proud. The bat house. Yeah, it's his uh, little bat hut. And he <laughs> bat needs hut. to get away from Gotham. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab again my little extra piece and just scoop out that extra. I don't know if you can see <laughs> the excess glue. So if I should put another pin oh, to hold the bottom in place. Uh, come on, do your thing. Okay, perfect. So we've got the, the structure rel almost there. I'm just going to pull this pin out so that I can glue the front of the building on and that should sit flush with this facing here so I will just go through and put a bit of PVA on here like that get the facade the front facade of our building and pop it on top coming together, getting there, and get some more of my trusty sewing pins. I'm going to pin this one front on because the other angles are going to support it. You can sort of see the inside of the, the structure for me. Mm. I apologize if I'm bringing this off angle and you can't really see it all that well, but once I've got these pins in place I will bring it around so that you can have a look at what I have done. Just this side because it's not entirely flush with the top. You can kind of adjust as you go. You can, yeah. I mean, it's never going to be 100% exact, but you want to try and get it as, as, as close as you can. And there we go, look at that. We've almost got ourselves a fully built little hut. <laughs> Lovely. It's <laughs> coming along quite well. Uh, it's just going to take a few minutes for it to dry, this particularly in the sun. Um, and uh, I might just take a little bit of a break while we get it to dry and come back to you with the next step in just a, a few minutes. Great. All right, brilliant. So uh, our structure is pretty much almost dry. I've just left a couple of pins. Um, some of the sides, the corners weren't uh, drying as quickly as others, uh, but that's okay. We can we can work around that, so I'm not too, too worried about that. So I'm just going to pop this to one side, uh, and at this juncture we're going to bring in the base uh, for our hut. Now as you can see, I've already gone and uh, pre-ruled the uh, I guess the outline of where our structure will sit on that base. You want to try and get it as central as possible uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, aesthetics. It looks a bit weird if it's a bit off center. And secondly, as I mentioned at the start of the video, uh, we're going to be using most of this space on our three mil MDF base. So that way, the more centralized uh, our, our structure is on it and the more space it's taking up, the less it's going to warp. Uh, when we go to like text drop the base with with sand or whatever you're going to use Because uh, obviously glue is going to cause the wood to contract a little bit and, and warp So what I'm going to do is get my PVA glue I'm going to grab our hut and on the bottom I'm going to run well have a little bit of a, <laughs> a Spill here. I'll just fix that up. I think it's the, the heat on the inside as well is getting uh, doesn't really matter on the inside because uh, they won't see that. But thanks for pointing that out, Pete. No worries. <laughs> I'm just going to go and put a bit on. Oh, it's not really coping with the heat too well, <laughs> like me, which doesn't make sense. I come from a hot country. All right, it's going to pop that in. I'm going to use those uh, 
lines to guide it as close as I can to where it is and just smooth down the excess. How's that looking from the front? It's not too bad, just bring it up a bit. Excellent, all right. So there we are, it's on uh, its base, which is brilliant. So, so you would put this on the base before we do the, the final? The, tr the trim, yeah, because uh, it's gonna help us maintain uh, a bit more structure um, with our build. So I'm just gonna, for like structural rigidity when you're pushing against it. Yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna leave it sure. on the base, which is brilliant. So as it's drying, we can we can kind of work around that. I've already gone and pre-cut all the trim, um, which roughly so around the, the bottom of our structure, I'm gonna have a two centimeter uh, trim, uh, just because that shows that it's obviously the the base of the structure, uh, and that's probably where you'd have a bit more uh, build up, thank you Pete, uh, in that structure to obviously you know, have a, a more solid foundation. And then along the, um, the roof line, I'm gonna have a one centimeter trim. Now with the door and the trap door on top of the structure, I am going to put uh, a uh, half, a 50 mil trim. So I've already cut that for the trap door. I'm not gonna worry about the window it doesn't really need a trim, so we'll just leave it as is. So again, with our trim, we just get the PVA. And you can see it's all, it was all marked off on the plan earlier as well. Yes, so it was all that. marked off on the plan. Uh, I'm going to, on the back end of it, just dab a bit of PVA glue. Oh, I think some of them out, that's okay, I'll wash off. Rub off, whatever. <laughs> And I'm gonna stick uh, this bit of trim on the, over the door. I'll just, sorry to bring it off camera, but I'll bring it back once I've got it in position. Now, if it's not sticking down to it completely, don't worry too much. Uh, I've got a little trick up my sleeve to sort that out, but you just wanna get it into the general position uh, of the structure like so and I'll go through and I'll do all the um, I'll do all the base uh, trim and this just cut out that cardboard we yep. did earlier for the just um, that for the supports when we did the door exactly right uh, the exact same way and you just want to make sure it's again like our corners meeting up nice and flush for the back bit a side bit. Where did our back bit go? Don't tell me that's the back bit. It might be. <laughs> um, okay, I may yeah, need to go. It, that's a that's a side bit. Go and cut new sides. Okay. I mean, I think this side is, it, is that bit the side bit. That's a side bit. Yeah. Oh. I've got to go do uh, new sides. Maybe just. Um, actually, I should be able to get away. I'll just cut those. Sure. Sorry, I have gone a little bit too eager. I'm just gonna. I've got a bit of an off cut to make up for a bit of lost ground. I cut the other trim sides a bit short, so I'm just gonna make up for that by just getting this two centimeter off cut, cutting it. To make up for a bit of lost uh, lost ground on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I did that. It's all right though. Uh, you find at the end. You do. It's all. It's all a massive learning curve. You just make it up as you go. It doesn't work. There's always a way around. made up for that gap with the extra centimeter that I just cut then. I'm just going to do the final side of the building with its bottom trim. A bit of PVA glue. It's not really going to matter 
with that extra little offcut because when we go to texture the building it'll all kind of blend in a bit that's not too bad so as you can see I've just gone through and put that trim on now to hold it in place I'm gonna grab another little cheeky shortcut there they are there some rubber bands which I've got in my little ziplock bag here so I'm gonna pull those out now you want to get rubber bands like these that are nice and, and long we don't want it to be completely taut on the structure uh, we want it just to kind of sit loosely to hold it in place so I'm just gonna bring it over if it's I guessing if it's too strong of a band it could collapse the structure potentially. It, it could yeah so it's gonna be a little bit snug going on but once I get it into place it should be okay I tend to use, uh, when I'm using some elastic bands, I, yep. I grab them from, uh, you know when you go to the uh, you go to the supermarket oh, and, yeah. and you get the little blue elastic bands that come with stuff, like yep. spring onions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tend to keep those for little things, like when I'm doing models, because they're very light. Yes, those so. are good for, for models. These ones are the thicker brown ones, as you can see. And it's it's not, as as I mentioned before, you don't want it too snug on the structure, just so it's, it's sitting quite gently uh, and try and kind of get it to evenly distribute its weight where possible. I might just bring it a little bit up top because that's starting to, that particular corner is not gluing on as well as I thought it would. Oh, bring up the house. Or it might be a case, I might just bring this all the way down and I might get a second one. Sometimes you need multiple rubber bands to to hold things in place and oh, uh, it's starting to twist which I don't want it to do I want it to be nice and straight just bring that down and I'll just grab another elastic band out of my bag and put it on as well Whoop. Just being careful that it doesn't cause the structure to whoop, implode on itself and watch myself. I don't stab myself on those pins. <laughs> I guess I could say I put blood, sweat, and tears into this project. <laughs> Not that I really want to. this wall is starting to give where I want it to. Okay. I'm just fixing up this uh, this corner here because it's starting to come a little bit loose but once I put that the top bit of trim in that'll help hold it in place. So hopefully I've got enough trim for the top may have to do some more uh, on the job cuts just to get it into place so again just a bit of PVA glue smoothed it out and popping my bit of top trim on this one okay get rid of that piece that's on my fingers uh, where are we come around and do this side now And I apologize if this is all taking place out of shot, but I will spin it around and show you. It's just sticking card on. It's just sticking stuff. card onto. Uh, I'm sure people can that. Yeah, it's not that big of a stretch of the imagination. Uh, again, I'm a bit short, but that's okay, I've got excess. So I'm just going to glue this bit on. Change our motto to measure three times, cut once. Measure three times. <laughs> cut once. Cut once. <laughs> That's very true. Is it the old adage of "Do as I say, not as I do"? I think we'll blame blame. Um, is it, uh, what do you call it? Sunstroke. Yeah. I think it's frying your brain a bit. It is. 
I've very, become, very hot now. I've become unconditioned it's, it's to the heat. Just literally focused like a beam mm. on poor Dan's face right now. I am nicely barbecued. Okay, so I've just, uh, we just skipped ahead. Um, I've put all the trim on the building and we've got some rubber bands holding it in place. Uh, still a bit of pin, uh, pin work as well to hold uh, the walls together. They're not drying as quickly as I anticipated, but that's okay. Um, on a day like today, if I leave it out in the sun for a, a few minutes, it shouldn't be uh, too much longer, but that's effectively it built. Um, we're just gonna leave it to dry and then we're gonna come back and have a look at the, the finished product and uh, compare it with the, the one we made earlier. All right, see you in a bit. Okay, well, we're at the end of our terrain project, uh, building our desert hut. Uh, as you can see, these are the schematics of what we were trying to accomplish. Uh, I guess the real test is to see how we did. Shall I get the, uh, the finished product? I, I think so. I think okay. It's... Here it is. That's our, our finished hut. <laughs> uh, it's looking pretty good, if I do say so myself. There's a couple of minor faults with it, but you know, as I was saying before, you're not going to get it 100% perfect. So don't don't lose any sleep over that. I certainly won't. Um, a few things that we'll, we can fix up um, that aren't, you know, major. Uh, stuff that will obviously be kind of glossed over with the um, texturing and the painting. So it's not too uh, too. <laughs> Too, 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 dr too dramatic, I, yeah. I, I think with these rustic buildings as yeah. well, like if there's a, a slight thing that's slightly off, mm. it's not so inconceivable that no. a, a real building. I mean, sometimes when they look so uniform and perfect, they actually look artificial. Yes. So strangely, when you get a, if you do get a bit of warping in one bit or what bit's a bit wonky or curvy, I think that's actually adds to the character of a building like this. Definitely. So you know, we're not building things out of steel here. We're not. So <laughs> this is supposed to be made out of mud. People right? don't actually so. have to live here. No. Well, it's okay. <laughs> it, 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 it's fine. All right. Um, Let's um, see how it. Should we see how it compared to yeah, the, the original? One? This is all you were going for. This is in a controlled environment. This is Ooh. in. Yeah. There we go. I know which one I'd live in. <laughs> I'll let this one, I think it's got more character. We could be, we could be neighbours. Good. Yeah, we could be neighbours. <laughs> we got one each now, this is good. There you go. And so finally, the, uh, the, the Sheriff Woody test. We'll put him there he is. next to the building. We'll bring this one away. Oh, it looks like he'd be, be at home there. Come out, partner. <laughs> it's a stick up. Oh, and, uh, no. and he's only, he can stand over and he can shoot over yeah, as well. There and, you he, go. and he gets his cover safe. I wonder if that works now. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but we'll, <laughs> we'll have to look it up. Good stuff. Well, well done, Dan. Thank you very That's much right. Thank for you. lending us your expertise right. and time for the day. Pleasure. Um, obviously, there's a follow-up video to this we'll be doing, which we is will. painting it, uh, and, and we'll be uh, we'll be covering that in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, for now, please do uh, subscribe. Uh, button's going to go there. There you go. Subscribe button right there. Uh, somewhere in there. Uh, so click there, and uh, and we will. Uh, you can subscribe and see more of what we've got coming up in future. Uh, and we also uh, will have a bit more post more videos to this YouTube channel, uh, and we'll have a website soon. Uh, we also have the Warhammer Gaming Guild. We have a club Facebook page. You're welcome to join there and engage with us. Uh, we'll be posting this video there, among other things. And also, if you do live in the area or you come down to London, you want to throw some dice. Uh, we meet weekly on Mondays uh, around Common Garden, uh, and you can go to our meetup. If you just literally go to Google and type in Meetup Warhammer. Uh, we are think number one on there, so feel free to, to go there and, and join us at one of our upcoming gaming days. Brilliant. Anything else? I think that's it. Good. <laughs> All right. Well, look. Thanks for joining us. I hope this has been educational. We'll put full. Uh, we'll put the plans up on the on the link below. Yep. Um, and uh, like, share, subscribe. Let us know what you guys think. Yeah. If you've got any uh, suggestions for terrain projects you'd like us to cover, please do uh, put them in the comments section, and we'll see what we can do about uh, addressing those uh, issues here at the Terrain Lab. All right, well, until next time, uh, take care, good building, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye. Cheers.